Hey everyone, Shin here. So, I've got another version of the Ham Passive build for you guys, even though I just updated it after the September feature pack. After messing around with some trait changes and a sigil change, I found a variant that I actually like more than the previous version. So, as far as what hasn't changed, the weapons obviously haven't changed, the utilities are no different, still uses Heal Sig, Balance Dance, Endure Pain, Bulls Charge, and Signet Rage. If you need to, you can switch out Endure Pain for Berserker Stance as per usual. The gear is no different, it still uses Berserker stats, it still uses Melandra runes. The change as far as the sigil goes, the greatsword sigils are still the same. It still uses air and hydromancy. However, on the hammer, while it still has the impact sigil in it, I decided to swap out paralyzation for doom. After doing testing with this variant, I found that the poison application and the reduction in healing to my opponents was coming in far more handy than the extra duration on Earthshaker. I found I was interrupting my own stun more often than not from Earthshaker because of this increased duration, so I figured I would swap that out because I wasn't getting that benefit anyway, and throw in Poison, and it turns out it works very well when it comes to fighting other warriors, it works very well when fighting elementalists, it's come in a lot more handy than Paralyzation was, so that's the change sigil-wise. Now for the traits. This is where the big shift happened. Now, first off, what you may notice is this is the first version of the build that does not take Lake Specialist. All of the previous iterations of the build, up until this point, have taken Lake Specialist down in Tactics. After messing around with this variant and getting used to how it plays, that lack of Lake Specialist actually doesn't matter as much as you might think. It's handy for catching people off guard, it's handy for catching people, however, with the way this new version is set up, that's no longer a necessity. And I exchanged those trait points for more damage up in strength. Similarly, the speed issue that I originally tried solving with Furious Speed, I found another solution for it. So I took the two points out of arms and I put those back in strength as well. So now, the spread of the build is 60404. Very similar to one of the spreads for the Axe Shield Greatsword build, one of the classic roaming builds for Warriors. Now, before I go over what happened in Strength, I will go over how the speed situation is still resolved. Down in Discipline, I've taken out Destruction of the Empowered and swapped it out for Warrior Sprint. So now the Discipline traits are Vigorous Focus and Warrior Sprint. Warrior Sprint is just as useful as Furious Speed, if not more useful, because it's a permanent boost that cannot be removed, cannot be ripped. And while it isn't quite as much as Swiftness, it is still enough to allow you to catch your targets, it is still enough to allow you to move around quickly, the bonus still applies to Rush and Whirlwind Attack and every other movement skill we have, so the speed bonus is still there, the ability to catch opponents is still there, it just isn't a rippable boon anymore. The defense traits are still the same, it is still Dark March and Cleansing Iron. These are staples of the build, can't get rid of them, otherwise you're going to be hurting on conditions. Now, up in strength, the Adept is still the same, Great Fortitude. The Master, that has been reopened in the strength line, that is Slashing Power for more damage. And finally, the Grandmaster trait is Berserker's Power. I did mess around with Burst Precision, and while that is a viable alternative, I decided to stick with Berserker's Power simply because that is extra damage all the time, or a majority of the time. Yes, you are losing that bonus when you use the Burst skill, however, the build generates adrenaline so quickly that you're gaining that damage bonus quite often, to the point where it's up almost all the time. Additionally, because of the change with Warrior Sprint, you don't need to use Signet of Rage. Now you can keep the Signet on passive more often and get that Berserker's Power bonus more quickly than you could before had you been using the Signet all the time. Now, since I've been able to keep the updates themselves short in this video, I will throw in some gameplay footage this time and go over some of the things to look out for and adapt to with this version of the build as opposed to the previous versions. This clip is a good demonstration of the benefits of using Warrior Sprint over Fury Speed, as well as the benefits of putting all of those extra points up in strength now. With the innate mobility from Warrior Sprint as opposed to having Swiftness on proc, this allows me to fight the Necromancer without having to worry about my Swiftness being corrupted. It allows me to quickly get out of all of the area effects he's dropping. It allows me to quickly recover from any minor snares I may get hit by. In one case in this fight, it allows me to dodge the Golem Knockdown Rush and allow me to avoid having to use Balance Stance to deal with it and just allows me to stay on the Necromancer. 
then with the extra damage from things like Berserker's Power and Slashing Power, I'm able to do more damage to the Necromancer's health per swing and eat through that Death Shroud more quickly. This clip helps demonstrate the benefit of the increased damage against heavily armored targets, and to a small effect, it also helps demonstrate the benefit of the new Doom Sigil and the Hammer. Having the extra damage on your attacks and just in general allows you to not only hit for more damage against heavily armored targets and targets that have high protection uptime, like a Guardian, but it also helps to improve the damage of Reckless Dodge, which is actually unblockable, allowing you to get through some of the blocks like Aegis and the Focus Shield and the other things that Guardians typically use when rowing. The Doom Sigil helps to throw off some of the healing potential of Guardian. While they do have a lot of condition removal, this addition of poison forces them to consider removing that poison more often and leaving them open to your cripples, your chills from hydromancy and things of that nature, forcing them to make more mid-combat decisions about their condition removal, giving you more openings to take advantage of. Alright guys, that's it for this update to the Hamtast build. Luckily I was able to keep this one short and sweet for you. I was able to throw in some gameplay while still giving you all the necessary information for the update. If you are looking for a written version of the Hamtastic Guide, I've got a link to that in the description below as per usual. That written guide will always be the most recent version of the build. That being said, all of the variants for the Hamtastic build are viable. Every single one, you can pick and choose which one you want to use. I just like this newest version because it kind of centers around the core value of getting in someone's face, locking them down, and killing them quickly. Alright guys, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, do whatever you want to do. All appreciated, and I will see you in the next video or around the stream. Take care everyone.